since July, uh, when the Derry School District first introduced its 21st Century Learning Community Project, there have been numerous questions about uh, how we intend to pursue uh, the, the, the goals uh, that we've outlined and how they relate to President Bush's uh, 2000 project. And what we'd like to do this evening, uh, as a matter of fact, as uh, part one of a four-part series, is just briefly give you an overview of our 21st Century Project, Learning Community Project, and <clears throat> in, in the next several series, explain in greater detail the year-round school program, uh, the cost impact, uh, how we intend to uh, f fund our project, and hopefully uh, as we visit the various schools in the community over the next several weeks, we'll have a chance to respond to questions in greater detail. What I'd like to do right now is to introduce the five major parts or components of our learning community. The first being parent partic participation through choice. Uh, the major component, one of the major components of our program is the year-round school and the lab school choice, the ability of the parent to choose a traditional school calendar, a year-round school calendar, or to lengthen the school year of their child by uh, getting involved in our lab school. We seek to develop a, a very technology-rich learning environment, both in the newly proposed middle school as well as the existing uh, elementary schools within the district. We're looking for teacher team management at building levels. Uh, we are putting an awful lot of emphasis on partnership and community education, and we're seeking uh, to develop an administrative program within the buildings that's different and innovative by using uh, parents as members of our administrative board by using teachers as member of our administrative board and actually changing the role of uh, what we've all come to know and love as a building principal. One of the major components of change as we see it is that of restructuring the dairy elementary schools. In order to give parents a choice we have to change how our buildings now operate and, and offer a, a program that would uh, focus on an elementary school, R12, that has a traditional school calendar of 180 days, and another elementary school that has been reorganized or will be reorganized to grades R12 uh, on a year-round school calendar. We're also looking to uh, focus on restructuring our intermediate grades into two schools one on a traditional school calendar, grades three, four, and five, and the other choice would be a year-round school calendar, grades three, four, and five. As part of the restructuring process, as I previously mentioned, we're, we're seeking to build a new middle school. The new middle school would have two campuses, one that uh, would support a traditional ca a calendar year, the other a, a year-round school calendar. We feel by restructuring, we're going to give parents uh, the choice of of not only a traditional calendar, but also the choice of expanding that 180 traditional day school year uh, in 15 day blocks. Another chart will illustrate <clears throat> how a, a child uh, can be scheduled in and out of the lab school and, and the option of extending the school year. Traditionally, we've looked at a school calendar uh, in its typical nine month block. Uh, where students attend schools anywhere from a, uh, uh, 22 days per month to 15 days per month. We feel that while the traditional school calendar did serve a purpose in, the, in, the, in an industrialized society, that as we move more and more into a highly techn technological society, that more and more folks will be looking for choices as to the length of the school year and actually when their child attends school. So we'll continue to maintain the traditional nine-month school calendar for 180 days, but we would like to add another component, and that's our 45-15-day plan. That speaks to the issue of a child going to school for 45 consecutive days with a 15-day break and then 45 additional days until, in fact, they have uh, acquired 180 school days, which would be equivalent to a traditional school calendar. The difference in this instance, however, is that we want to be able to blend the attendance in a year-round school program 
with that uh, of our math science lab school. In a typical year-round school calendar, a child attends for 45 days, then has the option of taking a 15-day break to vacation with parents or just to take a break from school, or as we see it, or as we envision it, to be able to attend a 15-day uh, block of time in a math science technology lab school that will be uh, a fun, hands-on activity centered program, uh, un totally ungraded. Youngsters who are involved in a traditional school year would in fact be able to participate uh, in the lab school, but in a very restricted period of time. And, and the, the, tra the traditional cal calendar will drive uh, when a child uh, will be able to attend. But as we see it, uh, if you're in a traditional program, children uh, typically off during the months of July and August would be able to have a block of time uh, to be able to be involved in the math science lab school, while children in the year-round school program would have at least four 15-day blocks of time to select from to be able to participate in the lab school. It's our intention to restrict the number of occasions that both a parent and a child could uh, elect in, to be involved. We, we feel that three 15-day blocks would be more than sufficient uh, uh, in, in any one given school year. I think I should note too that <clears throat> in a, a traditional year and, and a year-round school year where we're going to collaborate calendars, there is common time when both the traditional school year children and the year-round school children would not be in school. Typically in July there would be a period of a week and a half and also during the month of December. Normal holidays are also recognized in both the traditional school year and the year-round school program. Another component that we feel is absolutely essential to our 21st Century Learning Community Project is that of creating profit centers. Schools traditionally have uh, uh, built buildings and, and then extend the cost to the community where the schools exist. What we're trying to do is look at the buildings that we have and see if there's a way that we can turn them from a cost center into a profit center. The two ideas that we currently have uh, involve the Floyd Elementary School. The Floyd Elementary School would in fact be closed as a cost center and either not be reopened or be reopened as uh, a special education facility. We're targeting the $800,000 that we currently expend on out of district placements in, of handicapped children. We feel if we could retrofit Floyd uh, and, and use other include special education inclusion activities, we could make a very big dent in that $800,000 currently spent. <clears throat> we have another elementary school slated uh, to be retrofitted into the Math Science Technology Lab School. By closing that school as a cost center and reopening it as a profit center, we feel that the savings in both of these profit center projects would be nearly enough to cover the startup costs for opening uh, the total, totally new project that we envision and, and call our 21st century learning community. One of the four-part series uh, that will be aired uh, in the weeks ahead will specifically deal with the costs of both the profit centers and uh, the construction of the middle school and, and the cost of restructuring. The new middle school uh, really focuses on some different kinds of activities than uh, we have been used to in public education. We're looking to bring into our middle school a high school level vocational education program where both junior high school youngsters and senior high school students can participate in a culinary arts program, can participate in a child care program, and not only participate singularly, but be able to work in a cooperative fashion so that youngsters on the junior high school level understand that there are programs, program offerings on the high school in vocational education, and that in fact New Hampshire has uh, a very extensive uh, facility, th facilities throughout the state to address vocational education needs. We're also looking at <clears throat> unusual programs uh, 
uh, that speak to the issue of physical education. We'd like to uh, explore the avenues of physical fitness programs. We'd like to get our community involved into a physical fitness center. We're, we're particularly interested in facility use by, by the elderly and by other uh, folks within our community. In our culinary arts program, we want to explore uh, the, the operation of an actual restaurant uh, so that we could encourage civic organizations in town to join our junior high school population in the course of a normal school day so that the, the youngsters in our school community can see that there are people in the community that work very hard at making their community a, a very nice place to live. We're also looking at an unusual position that we want to borrow from industry, and, and that's a site director, uh, and, and that individual would be looking to encourage use of the school facility, both beyond the school day and within the school day, uh, to, to use the facilities uh, to, to, the, to the, the fullest extent that they're meant to be. The middle school, naturally, because it will be new, uh, will uh, uh, be designed to have uh, uh, the, a technology-rich environment. An interesting characteristic of the facility that we're proposing are the four pods or the four pod houses. Uh, what we envision is that each team uh, will have a, a group of students in that pod, in that community, if you will, and that it will be managed from that pod and that there will be fle flexible classroom space, uh, individual computer facilities to be used by that pod. Uh, by flexible space, we mean uh, portable doors that would turn a 900 square foot classroom into an 1800 foot learning center, square foot learning center. We're looking to integrate technology both in the classroom and as well as uh, in management tools. The middle school facility itself will have two campuses, one that will service the year-round school population and one that will service the other choice, and that would be the traditional school year. By going to year-round schools, <coughs> we feel that uh, we could possibly uh, recapture 25 percent of potential student space. Uh, again, one of our future programs will highlight year-round schools and what it means to the parent and to the child. What we're looking to do in developing the uh, learning community is to involve uh, administrators in, in strategic planning and innovative funding practices, uh, creating an information network, and that's one of the reasons why we're here tonight. Uh, we would like to, however, invite you to our future meetings that we have planned throughout the school district. Um, by being in attendance at these meetings, we'll be able to be in a position to answer your questions directly from the floor on any part of our 21st century learning community project. So we really do have a plan to involve the community as we uh, unfold our project. We'd like uh, to develop a, a system of curriculum support by teacher training and internships uh, through real world input from business and industry and from parents and non-parents within the community. We're looking to get involved in executive loan programs uh, where, where we want to have off-site uh, uh, learning facilities for young adults in, in our community who would like to either uh, enhance their abilities, uh, job, job abilities, or in fact get involved in an off-campus degree program. Our goal <clears throat> is to use our facilities beyond the school day, to not make our middle school facility or even our elementary school facilities for that matter a program just for children. Uh, the name, the learning community, uh, speaks to the real issue. Thank you very much, and uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you at our uh, scheduled meetings during the month of October. Hello, I'm Rick Willits, Chairman of the Dairy School Board. And this is one in a series of programs that we hope will give you a better idea of the changes that we are planning in the Dairy School District. This reorganization is a three-year project, and we will be meeting with groups over the next few weeks to explain our ideas and get input from the community. These meetings will be sponsored by our PTAs and held at the various schools. Channel 30 and the Dairy News will have information about the specific times and places. 
But we hope that these programs will give you some basic information so that if you attend these meetings, you'll be better able to ask the questions that we don't answer here and give us your input about our plans for reorganization. There are several programs in this series, and this one is about our year-round school calendar. We call it the 4515 school plan. It's not ours original with us. It's been done in other places. And with the 4515 plan, the 180 days of school are spread out over the entire year, rather than with the traditional plan, where they are sandwiched in between September and June. Now, the best way to illustrate this is with the chart, and over here we have one of us. Uh, with the 4515 plan, we divide the school population up into four groups on this chart, blue, red, green, and yellow. And I will refer to them as the blue group or the red group or something like that. Starting in August, the blue group will be in session, the green group will have been in session for a bit, and the yellow group will be in session, but the red group will be on vacation. At this point, near the end of August, the blue group will continue in session, the red group will start a session, green will be on vacation, and the yellow group will continue. Three weeks later, you'll notice blue, red, and green are in session, yellow is out. The reason it's called 4515 is because for 45 days, a group of students is in school session, that's 45 school days, nine weeks, and for 15 school days, three weeks, that group of students is on vacation. They then return for 45 more days of school, and then 15 days of vacation, 45 days of school, 15 days of vacation, alternating throughout the year. Now, while this is happening, if we go back to the chart, uh, you'll notice that at any one time, only three out of the four groups are in school. What this means is that if a school is designed to hold 600 students, then we can put 200 in blue group, 200 green group, 200 yellow group, and the 200 that would be in the red group aren't there. So the 600 fit comfortably into the school. Even though the school has 800 students in it, it only has 600 at any one time because we rotate one-fourth of the school into vacation. Uh, the teachers would follow the same schedule as the students. They would go for 180 days. There would be no increase in salary there. It would simply spread the the year out. Now, what advantage is this? The main advantage is that it does allow us to put more kids into a building without overcrowding that building. Again, we would only have 75% of the students in session at one time, so that a 600 student school could actually house 800 students, only 600 at a time though. Another advantage is that we eliminate the two and a half month school vacation over the summer. This is a period of time when an awful lot of students lose the momentum of the learning experience that they've had for the past year. Uh, they do not read quite as often as they should. They certainly don't do math, science, social studies as they would if they were in school. And when September rolls around, they're not quite in the groove yet, and we have to backtrack a little bit. By eliminating the two-and-a-half-month summer vacation, we enable the kids to have a greater continuity that there is no major break in the learning experience. Uh, we have found in school districts that have implemented this in other places that the standardized test scores of the students have gone up and the attendance records have improved. It seems that if you only have nine weeks of school and you know a three-week vacation is coming up, you tend to not try and cut out quite as often. Uh, while in the traditional calendar you may be waiting and waiting for summer vacation and at some point say, I'm leaving <laughs> for a day or two. Not that any of our dairy students would ever do that. Um, there are, if we go back to the chart, some common vacation times if we look here. Right here at the beginning of July, nobody is in session. Uh, the reason for that is we need time when the school is empty of everyone to go in and do the maintenance that cannot be done while students are there. Uh, over here, December, nobody is in session. That's Christmas time. And we would do some maintenance during that point also. Uh, the end of November, the standard Thanksgiving break, no one's in session. We would have um, Labor Day, no one is in session. You see a, a thin white line running down here. Memorial Day, right over here, no one's in session. There are various days spread throughout the year. 
just to show you again that Hood School is a very busy place. Ah, there would be the traditional one-day vacations when no one is in session, as we have now. Let me emphasize one thing, that this plan is going to be an option. The entire Derry School District is not going to switch over to that. Some of our schools will be run on the traditional 180-day plan from September to June, and some of our schools will be run on the 45-15 plan. Still 180 days, just spread out. You will have the choice as to whether your child attends the traditional school year or our new year-round calendar. Let me consult my notes here. All right. Um, if, yes, pardon me, if you have more than one child in the system, we will, and you wish to have both children in the stand, in the uh, year-round school, we will accommodate you so both children are in the same grouping. If the third grader in your family is in group blue, we would not put the fifth grader in the yellow group so that you would have to balance two different school years. Uh, if you wanted your children in different groups for some reason, certainly we could accommodate you, but there's no need for you to worry that they will be put in two groups. We will accommodate the uh, brothers and sisters in our system. One of the big questions that parents have when we propose this system is daycare. That they are used to the standard school year and they have some arrangements made for the two and a half months over the summer where uh, perhaps a daycare facility takes the child, a neighbor, grandmother, an aunt. And now, instead of having that summer time as a block, what you would have is a three-week break here, a three-week break some uh, nine weeks later. What are you going to do with your children? Well, one of the things that we are planning to do in this reorganization is to provide what we're calling the Allen Shepard Math and Science Lab School. This would be an ungraded school where kids would get a three-week shot at a hands-on experience in science and math. It would be very untraditional, and it would reinforce what is being learned in the schools, and the schools would reinforce what would be taught and uh, experienced at our lab school. It is during these three-week times that what we are effectively doing is giving you the choice to increase your child's school year from 180 days to 205 days or perhaps even 220 days. There are four three-week breaks during the year, and it is our intention that if you wish, your child could attend two of these three-week sessions. We feel there must be several times, at least two of our three-week vacations, where the, the student gets a true vacation to run around and not worry about school at all. But at your, you know, at your option, a child could attend our lab school for one of the three-week breaks or two of them and, again, increase their school year from uh, 180 days to up to 220 days. This, by the way, puts us more in line with many places in the world whose school year is uh, considerably longer than our own. If we go to the chart again, one of the, the key aspects that might appeal to an awful lot of families is when vacation time would be available. If you're on the blue team, here in October you'll have a three-week break. Now that would not normally be available to you. And it might be that you love to take the kids and go up into the White Mountains and camp amidst the foliage. You'd have that opportunity without taking your child out of school. It might be that you're an avid skier. And in late January, here's a time when there'll be three weeks and nobody else is going skiing and your children are not in school so you will not have to sacrifice any time for them to go skiing with you. Uh, in December, perhaps you wish to travel. Uh, Christmas vacation, uh, relatives far away. If you were in the yellow team, you would have a break right before Christmas time and with the Christmas vacation would give several weeks that you could go California, Florida, wherever the relatives happen to be. There are other times during the year, it might be that you like to go to Disney World, and the only time you can do it is either during the February or April vacation when the rest of the world is there, or take your child out of school. Well, if you were in the, I don't know, yellow team, the end of March, nobody else is down there, the weather is nice, and you will not have to take your child out of school. We believe that the traditional two and a half month summer vacation is something that served a purpose 30, 40 years ago when Ozzy and Harriet were the norm, where one parent was home all the time, and during the summertime, that parent could take care of the children, take them to the beach, 
various activities. And we find that these days that's not quite the case. There are an awful lot of families where both parents work. And so a summer vacation is only a summer vacation for the child, not for the parents. There are many families with only one parent, and that makes it even more difficult to deal with vacation time with the child. We think that by spreading out the vacations over the year and providing opportunities for your child to be in a learning experience, we better serve your needs and better match your lifestyle uh, the way it is today. There is no doubt a question in your mind about how much this might cost. One of the programs we're going to have will cover the costs of our reorganization. We would say now, though, that A, we are going to look for, vigorously look for, non-traditional funding sources. We have already explored many possibilities and have been given some favorable reviews of our plans, and we hope the money will follow. This will be discussed at the meetings and at a separate program that will be aired on Channel 30. We know there will be costs associated with air conditioning the schools that go year-round. We know there will be costs associated with busing, since we'll be running buses for more than 180 days as school continues in session. We feel that these costs and others can be paid for in ways that will not impact your tax dollar, at least not enough for you to to say no to what is a sweeping change to make our system, which is good now, even better. We think that although our system is doing a good job at this point, that the times have changed and we have to react to that and change also. We think that a 180-day school year compared to the rest of the world is a little short. We want to provide your, your children with more time in school, if you desire. We think that a break over the summer uh, gets in the way of learning by taking a child out of the learning experience for more than two and a half months. We think that this plan, with all of its aspects, will provide your child with a better experience and will better prepare them for the life in the world community that we are all a part of. What if you don't opt for the year-round school? What if you do not have the opportunity to have a child into these three-week sessions. You must have the two-and-a-half-month school vacation in the summer. That doesn't mean this lab school is not available to you. On the chart, you'll see up top our traditional school calendar, which has 19 days in September, 22 days in October, and on down the line. During the standard July and August vacation is when those children would be able to take advantage of the lab school. Uh, if this part is in focus, well, I will ignore this part. Uh, up here, during the 12-week period of time that is normally summer vacation, there would be two three-week blocks of time when, if your child were in the traditional calendar, they could attend the lab school. For the other people, there would be more options as to when they could attend the lab school because they would have the breaks scattered throughout the year. And, of course, they would have more options for their own vacation plans. A uh, quick summary of the major points of this 45-15 year-round calendar. First off, it will spread the 180 days over the entire school year rather than between September and June. It will allow us to put more children into a building without overcrowding that building since we will have 25% of the school on vacation at any one time. It will provide greater continuity in education because we will not have a two and a half month break where kids, frankly, backslide a little and we have to catch them up in September. It will provide us with time slots throughout the year when the children can attend our lab school for a greater math and science, hands-on, non-traditional, fun and exciting for both student and teacher experience. You as parents will have the choice as to which of these two school calendars you will send your kid to. We hope you will come to our meetings. This chart and handouts explaining this and other aspects of our reorganization will be available. Uh, we will be there to answer any questions and to get your input. This is not carved in stone. We are looking for community support. We are looking for community input. We want to know what we can do to make the school system better as you see it as a parent and as a citizen. The meetings will be announced on Channel 30 and in the Dairy News. They will be held at the schools 
at various times. The PTAs will be sponsoring them. If you don't see on Channel 30 where they're being held and when, if you call your schools in the next few weeks, I'm sure they can tell you. Again, thank you for your time. I hope to see you at the meetings. I'm Rick Willits. We think that although our system is doing a good job at this point, that the times have changed and we have to react to that and change also. We think that a 180-day school year compared to the rest of the world is a little short. We want to provide your, your children with more time in school if you desire. We think that a break over the summer uh, gets in the way of learning by taking a child out of the learning experience for more than two and a half months. We think that this plan, with all of its aspects, will provide your child with a better experience and will better prepare them for the life in the world community that we are all a part of. What if you don't opt for the year-round school? What if you do not have the opportunity to have a child into these three-week sessions. You must have the two-and-a-half-month school vacation in the summer. That doesn't mean this lab school is not available to you. On the chart, you'll see up top our traditional school calendar, which has 19 days in September, 22 days in October, and on down the line. During the standard July and August vacation is when those children would be able to take advantage of the lab school. Uh, if this part is in focus, well, I will ignore this part. Uh, up here, during the 12-week period of time that is normally summer vacation, there would be two three-week blocks of time when, if your child were in the traditional calendar, they could attend the lab school. For the other people, there would be more options as to when they could attend the lab school because they would have the breaks scattered throughout the year. And of course, they would have more options for their own vacation plans. A uh, quick summary of the major points of this 45-15 year-round calendar. First off, it will spread the 180 days over the entire school year rather than between September and June. It will allow us to put more children into a building without overcrowding that building since we will have 25% of the school on vacation at any one time. It will provide greater continuity in education because we will not have a two and a half month break where kids, frankly, backslide a little and we have to catch them up in September. It will provide us with time slots throughout the year when the children can attend our lab school for a greater math and science, hands-on, non-traditional, fun and exciting for both student and teacher experience. You as parents will have the choice as to which of these two school calendars you will send your kid to. We hope you will come to our meetings this chart and handouts explaining this and other aspects of our reorganization will be available. Uh, we will be there to answer any questions and to get your input. This is not carved in stone. We are looking for community support. We are looking for community input. We want to know what we can do to make the school system better as you see it as a parent and as a citizen. The meetings will be announced on Channel 30 and in the Dairy News. They will be held at the schools at various times. The PTAs will be sponsoring them. If you don't see on Channel 30 where they're being held and when, if you call your schools in the next few weeks, I'm sure they can tell you. Again, thank you for your time. I hope to see you at the meetings. I'm Rick Willits.